Hey y'all, um, Mr. Pouts here. I'm going to do a quick homework help video for this uh, review sheet on volume of cones, cylinders, and spheres. Uh, I'm just going to go through a, a handful of problems, not all of them, but they will all kind of follow the ones that I'm going through. So the first example I want to do here, I'm going to actually do number two first, even though that's not the first one on here. I'm going to do number two because it's a cylinder, and that was the first one that we started talking about. Now, remember... In general, volume formula is capital B times the height. So that would be the area of the base times the height. And if you look at a cylinder, really the circle is always the base. So I would prefer it drawn like this so you can visualize it where the base is what is the same on top and bottom. And then you can see that the circle really is the base. And to find the area of a circle is pi r squared. So the formula for volume is pi r squared times the height. So we're going to take um, this formula for this cylinder. Volume is going to be pi times radius squared. So the radius is 3. It's halfway across the circle, so 3 squared times the height, which is 8. And we're going to let the calculator do the rest. Now, it does say use 3.14 for pi, but I would totally prefer the pi button. If you have it available on your calculator, that will make it slightly more accurate. But in the end, we want to round to the nearest whole number. So I'm going to take pi times 3 squared, which you can type in 3 times 3. You could do the squared button. You could do just type in 9, because if you know that 3 squared is 9. And then times 8, and I actually get 226. I don't know if you can see this, 226.19 so and, and so forth. Um, we want to round it to the nearest whole number, so that's going to round to 226 um, inches cubed. It's a volume, so it's inches cubed. All right, um, let's go to number three. Let's do number three next. Number three is a cone. So cone is very similar to a uh, cylinder, but it's one-third the size. Uh, the space it'll take up is one-third the size. So we ha the formula here that's given is one-third pi r squared times the height. So we have to multiply it all by one-third. So let's do this one. We got one-third times pi times the radius, which is 5, times the height of 15. Okay. So let the calculator do some magic. Um, I can do 1 third or 1 divided by 3 first, either way. Um, but then times pi times 5 squared, which you might already know is 25, or 5 times 5, and then times 15. So I get a bigger number here, um, just because it's a bigger. There's bigger numbers to begin with than the last one. It is 392.6990817. So we're going to round it up to 393. Nearest whole number, and we're dealing with centimeters, so the volume would be centimeters cubed or cubic centimeters. All right, let's do number four. Let's do a sphere one. A sphere is the one that's uh, quite a bit different than the others, but We've actually learned that you can um, find the volume of a sphere based off of a cylinder still. It, it's all connected. But the formula is given. It's 4 thirds times pi times radius cubed. So that's a different part here than the past two. So if I'm going to find the volume, I'm going to do 4 thirds times pi. That's already given. And then we just got to know the radius. So times radius cubed. In this case, we're given the diameter all the way across but remember the radius is only halfway across so the radius would be 10 inches so don't be tricked don't just use whatever numbers there make sure it is the radius the radius is 10 so 10 cubed which i believe is a thousand but i'm going to take four over three four thirds or four divided by three and then multiply by pi and then multiply by 10 cubed so there is a a little carrot button on most calculators that help you do um, different roots uh, other than, uh, not roots, uh, different exponents other than 2. You can use that care button and then do a 3 um, after you put a 10 in there, or you can do 10 times 10 times 10. Either way, you should get 4,188.790205, which rounds to, it rounds up to 4,189. And this is inches, so it's inches cubed. 
All right, all the rest on this first page are very similar. Um, same formulas, same shapes, just different examples. So let's go to the back page. I want to do a couple on the second page here. Um, the first one I'd like you to like to do is number. Well, we'll do number seven and number eight, I think. Okay, so number seven, the volume of a cylinder. So again, if you recall, we said volume of a cylinder is area of the base times the height, so capital B times the height, and the area of the base of a cylinder is pi r squared because it's a circle base. So really we're doing pi r squared times height. So what we're given here is it says the volume of a cylinder is 1,356.48. So that's the volume. So I'm going to plug it in here. Plug it in, plug it in. Okay, because we're not finding the volume. We're given the volume. We're going to find the, the height in the end. So if the diameter is 12, so we got pi. We want the radius. So if the diameter is 12, that means the radius is half of that. So it's 6. So we'll do 6 squared times the height, which we don't know. So we're going to leave that as a variable. So we want to solve it for the height. We want to get h all by itself and say h equals this. But to do that, we got to get rid of all this stuff in front, this pi times 6 squared. And we can actually multiply those together right away to figure out what that number would be. So I'm going to take pi times 6 times 6, or if you already know, it's 36. Um, you get about 113.1 if you round. That's a, that's a rounded. So that's where we're at. So we have 1,356.48 equals 113.1 times h. And now just think back to solving equations. We want to solve it for h. We want to get the h by itself. How do we do that? Well, we got to get rid of this 113.1. And the way we do that is by dividing by 113.1 since it was multiplying is what the operation was. And we want to do inverses. So that gives h all by itself. And I take 1,356. 0.48 divided by that 113.1, and I get 11.9939165. Rounded to the nearest whole number is 12. Oops, 12, sorry. So my height is 12, what is this, in feet? So 12 feet. All right, last question I'm going to go through here is number 8. Um very similar, but we're dealing with a sphere, and there's a, something different that we're solving for. This time we're solving for the radius. So the volume of a sphere, which we already did an example, it's 4 thirds pi times radius cubed. And we want to solve it for the radius. So let's take that 113.04 and plug it in. So 113.04 is the volume. That should be equal to 4 thirds... Um, pi r cubed, sorry. All right, same thing we did before. We want to get the radius by itself. So let's take the 4 thirds times pi. Let's actually multiply those out. 4 thirds and then times pi. I get about 4.19. We'll just round it to 4.19. And similar thing as before, to get the radius cubed part by itself, we got to divide by 4.19 and then do it on the other side. I'm going to bring this over here. So 113.04 divided by that 4.19. I get about 26.5. Is really what I got is equal to radius cubed. That does not tell us what the radius is. We need to find the radius. And to find the radius, um, it would be a number that when you multiply by itself three times or you cube it, you'd get 26.99. Now I know that 26.99 is super close to 27. And I know the cube root of 27. Three times three times three gets you 27. So it's probably going to be about three. But what we want to do is the cube root to get the radius by itself. 
That'll give us radius is equal to whatever the cube root of 26.99 is. And if you have that calc that um, option available on your calculator, go ahead and do the cube root of it. But it ends up being 2.999, something like that. And we want to round it to the nearest whole number anyway. So it is going to be 3. In this case, 3 centimeters is the radius. All right. Now just as an FYI, number 9 is very similar to there but we're using a different formula, so it's going to have radius squared. So in the end, you'll have to do the square root. Um, number 10, it's just like the problems on the front page. Just read it through. It doesn't give you the picture, though. It just gives you the, the, the measurements, and it says find the volume of the cylinder, find the volume of this cone, and then compare them. And the last two, it says to come up with your own questions. So they can be similar to ones we did in, this exam in these examples, but try not to do them. Try to get creative. Make them a little bit different. All right? That's it for this review of cylinders, cones, and spheres and finding their volumes. We'll see you next time.